Hi guys, welcome to Learning Electronics Repair. I have a heap of PC stuff here. So, a friend of mine just called in. He spoke to me, oh, maybe six months ago, and said that somebody had given him, like, a complete mining rig. So, he said he had motherboard and six graphics cards, and he asked me a few things. And I just basically said, look, it's just a normal PC with these mining risers, but you don't have to use them. It's a PC. So, he's just walked in, and he brought me this. So, he says the case is something he had lying around somewhere. He's put the machine together, to some extent, and it's not working. And I said, could I have a look at it? I mean, this may be why he was given this, I don't know. So, he says he has two of these power supplies. He has six of these graphics cards, which are Sapphire Plus, no, Sapphire Pulse, Radeon RX 570, four gigs. Yeah, RX 570, so he has six of those. He said, oh, can I put two of them like in SLI mode? I said, well, it doesn't have a connector on the edge, so I don't think so. Backing plate, a mining adapter, cable, more cable. There's a hard drive here, which is just a 250 gig hard drive. Oh, there is a SSD, 120 gigs, so that's with it. And then we have motherboard processor, one stick of RAM. And he says basically it doesn't start. So let's have a look. The motherboard is on MSI Z270A Pro. So this is going to be, I think it's a 7th generation. Could be wrong about that actually. But I think the first thing we should do is try it. He's had this plugged in, so it's not going to go bang or do anything dramatic. So let's have a look to see what it says. It doesn't start. Oh, it made a clicking noise. Okay. Power on. Let's try and start it. Oh, it tried to start by itself. And stopped. twice oh do you see this light flashing down here can you see it yeah it comes on once more and then off yeah so that's what it's doing i think the first thing i'll do is to take this out of the case he says he has two power supplies i don't know if he's actually tried both but i'm going to put on up to one of my known good ones Okay, let's see what we can get out of it. And here's the motherboard. It's rather dusty, but that happens to stuff here, basically due to the Kalima, which is when the wind comes from the Sahara Desert over the Canary Islands. Actually, we're in the middle of one at the moment. Yesterday was 42 degrees centigrade here. That was the 30th of March, and we had an amber warning for hot weather. Not a red warning notice, by the way, or you what in the UK. We make a big issue about warm, yeah, it's just amber if it's 42. And that's actually a record. It's the first time they've ever had to issue an amber warning in March for heat. Yeah. Could be a hot summer coming. So it's a little bit cooler today, maybe 38 or something, and it's going to be a bit cooler again tomorrow. But I have the aircon at the office, so <laughs> it's a good idea to come to work at this time of year, yeah, when the weather's like this. Okay, so now we've put that all straight, and while this is dusty, let's see if we can uh, do anything with it. First thing I'm going to do is just test the CMOS battery. I reckon it might be flat. Well, well, I mean, literally, it is actually flat, but I mean, like, discharge, yeah. <laughs> Just to make the distinction between the two. So, probably a ground here. Maybe not a ground. Yeah, 2.8, so that is actually discharged. So we'll replace that to start with, but I can't see it being the cause of the problem. But, as I mentioned a couple of videos ago, 
be easy so first do the obvious things yeah that's got more than three that's good enough for me so we have that in there actually while i'm at it because it's got a strange power on problem i'm just going to check the current draw so this is something worth checking when you get buzz doing this sort of thing we go to micro amps range and we measure the current being drawn from the cmos battery to do this we put the positive lead onto the top of the battery the negative on the little tab and push the tab back so the current is flowing through the meter now 3.7 microamps that's fine i can't tell you exactly what it should be but 1.8 to 10 yeah somewhere in that region it shouldn't be zero and it shouldn't be more than 10 yeah so that sort of looks okay this was almost like it was doing a power on off sequence though there's a short in the vrm i'm not totally sure there is but let's have a look so ohms range and we'll check the resistance on the 12 volt connector so one side will be connected to ground anyway not that side and that is like kind of the reading into the mega ohms yeah just get the wire out of the way of the meter so we don't have a short in the vrm this side will be ground anyway okay so that reads okay now look at the ram phase as well so the ram vrm is down here i'm going to check from the mosfet so one side if the pair of MOSFETs will go to ground, that side. The junction between the two will be the RAM, the RAM supply. In fact, what I'm probably reading there, 133 ohms, is just the resistance of the RAM. Take the RAM out. That's higher now, so yeah, that was that. And then the other side of this MOSFET will be a 12 volt. And that's reading well into the killer ohm. So we don't have any shorts on that either. Just check again with the RAM in. Yeah, reading well to the killer ohms. If this MOSFET was short, you would actually read the resistance of the RAM, which we know is about 100 and something. Uh, 133. Okay. So preliminary, that sort of looks okay. Let's power this up off a known good power supply. What happens? Power on. I think he's got a duff power supply. Yeah. I mean, something different is happening. Well, this LED is flashing, maybe trying to tell us something, but. Looks like he's got a duff power supply. Not totally sure what that's supposed to be telling us. Is this got onboard video? Yeah, it has. Let's try it. Okay. Ready to try it again. Well, same sort of thing. The LED is flashing. It says CPU. Let's zoom down on that. Okay, I've got it just in shot. I think you can see. That says CPU and it's flashing. Does that mean we've got a problem with the CPU? I'll have a look to see which CPU is fitted and I'll also have a look for the user manual for this motherboard as well. Which is the Z270A Pro. Let's see what's under the fan. Okay. Well, there is a CPU there. It's it's not an I nothing. Yeah, it's not an I nothing. It's an I something. <laughs> oh, <it's sour> on. <laughs> Let's see. Well, it's a cellar on. Okay, so Celeron G9 
30. I guess if this was a mining rig, probably the speed of the CPU wasn't important. Okay, G3930. That's exactly what it is. So I need to check to make sure that's actually compatible with this motherboard. I think it probably is actually, but I'll just check. Well, yes, the CPU is compatible, so that isn't the problem. I'll have a look to see what the user manual says about the flashing CPU LED. Well, the first thing I notice is if you have a single RAM strip, it's in the wrong slot. It should be in the second one. Okay, well, it says that if the CPU LED lights up, it means the CPU is not detected or it's failed. Basically, that's what it says. I also noticed this board has a TPM connector, so this is where I can connect a debugger, one of the PCIe ones I have. Now, normally PCIe post card or debugging card will not work in the PCIe slot, only on gigabyte boards will it actually display a code. But if your motherboard has a TPM connector, it will connect to there. So we can also try that as well. But I think the first thing I should try with this, and there's a different CPU. Of course, while doing this, I'd better check the CPU socket as well. Uh, socket looks okay. Well, the CPU looks a little bit dirty though. I'll try resetting it first. I'll just wipe all the pins with a little bit of isopropyl. And then if it doesn't work, we'll try a different CPU. Okay, I've just given it a bit of a wipe over. Reset the CPU. I'll just rest my test fan on top of it. Right, let's try that. Hmm. Huh, would you believe it? The wires broke off my little switch. I've got another one. Okay, we'll put the RAM in the correct slot as well. Let's see what it does. Well, we have the same thing, basically. Yeah, that's flashing. I'll try my CPU. This is an i5-7500. I did just quickly check, it is compatible with this board. It's best not to do this, what I'm doing now, which is to actually insert the CPU with the heatsink compound on it because it's very easy to get it where you don't want it, but yeah, familiarity occasionally breeds contempt, unfortunately. So, comments below, guys. Yeah, I probably should be chastised over that one. Power on. What's it do? Well, interestingly, it doesn't do anything. Okay. No, it refuses to start. Now, that's interesting. Now, I know that CPU is a good one. On. No, it doesn't start. I'll now do it correctly, clean it first. Here is the Celeron again. Okay, power on. I'll just rest this on top of it. 
right. Doesn't start. Interesting. No, it definitely doesn't start. There's a the power supply running. Let's see if we've got any 5 volt standby. So, ground to the purple wire. Yeah, we have standby. Okay. On the switch. Three point three volts. If I just get a good connection on it, okay. Push the switch. This should go to zero, and it should start. Don't tell me another switch is broke. Yeah. <laughs> Not my day today, guys. Let's just short the two pins. Okay. This sort of stuff happens. I mean, it's two switches one after another. Still flashing. Let's try it again with my CPU. Okay, that's in. Let's try it. Well, the same thing's happening. Okay. Let's see if the CPU's got any power. I'm guessing it has because the board seems to have power, seems to have control over the fan basically. Let's have a look. Well, easiest place to get to actually is the RAM VRM. 1.2 volts, that's probably right for the DDR4. Well, that's the... I can't see anywhere obvious to get to for this one. That's going to be a bit tricky without taking this heat sink off. I will do it if I have to. The fact I've got power on the RAM tells me I've probably got power on the CPU as well. But we need to figure out if we have. Okay, now we can see what we want to see, which is the MOSFETs. Let's have a look. Power on, start. What have we got? Possibly this end. I'll soon figure out. I mean, I should have 12 volts somewhere. 12 volts on that one. So, drain of the other one should be the CPU. Yeah, 0.83. So, that's the CPU supply. That probably looks all right. I'm not sure exactly what it should be, but looks reasonable. Okay. Try something else. Let's try the analyzer card. So as I mentioned with these, unless it's a gigabyte motherboard, if you put this in the slot, it won't actually display anything. I'll show you. Okay, you can see it here. Let's try it. Yeah, so you just get zero, zero. That's what would normally happen. Let's put this into the TPM slot, which is here. So this is pin one. And this is pin one on the TPM. I got that from the user manual. Also, actually, if you look, it's like a, a thick white line, I'll show you. Yeah, so that's pin one. This one is also marked with an arrow, pin one. So we'll put this onto here. Okay, well, let's try it. Zero, just the flashing LED. So this really isn't booting at all. I'll try the BIOS then next. Let's just see if it's a BIOS problem, but the fact that it's not booting at all makes me think it probably isn't. 25L12873. My programmer would recognize that, so I'm going to remove that and let's try programming it. I can see pin 1 is here, just towards me. 
Okay. I'm going to do it the easy way, so I've removed the CMOS battery. I'll put some flux on either side. Okay. Plenty of it, but it's okay, it's not a problem. Leaded solder. On all of the pins. Even bridge them together, that'd be even better. And this should come off easily now with hot air. Don't need to have to put any caps on tape around anything else. It's not going to unsolder because the leaded solder will reduce the melting point. So this will unsolder first. Okay, let's go for it. I'll keep the heat away from this little jumper by putting it in that direction basically. I'm going to warm the area a little bit first. There's some little components here, so I'm going to move it upwards away from those basically. There. I'll take a little bit of braid while it's hot and just clean up the solder blob. Okay. Just making sure I don't catch these other little components. Okay, that's ready to be soldered. I'll just use a little bit of isopropyl alcohol. We can have a quick look at it first. There, so the little components at the side I mentioned, they're still there. I mean, they really are tiny. Another one there, that's fine. All in all, a pretty good job, really. Okay, let's reprogram the BIOS chip. There's the EEPROM and the little adapter. So I'm going to plug this into my EEPROM programmer. I actually showed how to do this on the previous one, well, previous but one video, so. I can just link that in this one. I'm now going to read the contents of this, download the latest one from the MSI website, and program it back into the chip. That's programmed successfully, so now we just need to solder it back on. Seeing, that, seeing as there's a little bit of solder on this pad, I'm going to slide it in this way, actually. There's a little bit on there as well, but I don't think that will cause a problem. So, flux. A little bit of solder. This is the narrow 0.2 millimeter solder. Okay, you see it's on that pad. Then we'll take the tweezers and we will position the chip. Okay, so I'm going left-handed with the tweezers, right-handed with the soldering iron. I am actually right-handed, but I need to use them both, and this method works best for me. I'll just try and line it up. If it ain't lined up, I can straighten it anyway. I find this much easier with the optical microscope, but we'll do it this way. Okay there 
Yeah, that's pretty good. It's straight enough for me, that is. It's on the pads. It's not shorting against any of them, okay? But it could go downwards a little bit. Probably if I do this, I'll make it worse. You shouldn't know when to leave these things alone, really. Okay, and we have a solder bridge there. That will be consorted. Okay. We'll just pin another leg down. The middle one. Okay. If there was a solder bridge, it's now gone. Let's do the other side. I'll have to work at a very awkward angle to get this into shot, but never mind, guys. For you guys, I'll do it. Okay. You see this big chunky soldering iron tip actually is ideal for this sort of work. Gets a lot of heat in very quickly. Solders very well. And I think we have it. Let's clean it up. Okay guys, that's nicely soldered, yeah. See, this isn't difficult. I did teach Sarah how to do this. She'd never soldered before. 20 minutes, I had her micro soldering really well, so you can see it's easy. Those of you who are wondering about Sarah, she's gone back to Germany at the moment, but she's hoping to come back in a couple of months. So when she does, we can teach her something else or maybe teach her to solder these chips, yeah? Okay, we can try this now. We are ready to try. Let's start it. Well, the light's on and stays on now. Is that good? Is that a good sign? I actually don't know if that's better or worse. But we certainly don't have a picture coming out of this. Could be because I forgot to put the CMOS battery back in, but I somewhat doubt that. Okay, battery's back in. Let's go again. No, the same. Well, that's interesting because reprogramming the BIOS changed its behavior. It's acting differently now. But I'm not sure whether this should come on the stale. Well, guys, I'm not getting very far with this, am I? So it's behaving differently now, but it's still not working. I think what I will do, and I should have done this probably a little while ago, I'm going to take my known good motherboard and just make sure that the RAM and the CPU are actually working. And then we have at least a solid base we can work from, yeah? So I'll just check these and let's have a look. And we're ready to go, guys. We have the capture card on, power supply on. Switch fell off. That's why I don't use this one. It's not very good. Start. Well, let's just make sure this does work. Well, it doesn't work. Sounds like it's got a RAM problem. Okay. Try another sort. Oh, that's interesting. Let me try my known good RAM. Okay, we'll try this. Hmm. 
Okay, or well, actually, I'd rather picture. Right, so we now know that this ram is good. Or is it just that it just won't work with one strip? Let's try it. I th would have thought it would work with one strip. I'll just say it's in a single channel mode. Let's have a look. Yeah, thought it would. So, it appears that the other RAM is faulty. The reason I didn't try this first is because I'd put this in the little ITX machine. If you watched the previous video, it's all back together. This is going to become part of my recording system. So, I need to get some more DDR4. This is what I had left. Okay. Well, let's try this again. Yeah, doesn't like it. Okay, so we'll go back to the board that we are repairing with the known good RAM and see what it does. Okay, so back in with the Celeron. Now we know 100% it is good. Let's go with our RAM. Which I would guess is in... Uh, I think it's slots 2 and 4 on this. Actually. Okay. We could always try the other two. At least we know for certain now we have good RAM, good CPU. No CPU LEDs on, fully. Not flashing though. See if it, anything happens. Looks like nothing's going to happen. Could try clear the CMOS, but considering I've actually reprogrammed the BIOS, I would have thought that's not going to help. Okay, I've just actually reset the BIOS. There's just some pins here. You have to put a jumper on there, which I just tried with one. Just check that in the user manual, take it back off again. Let's see if that makes any difference. Oh, something's happened. <laughs> switched on and switched off again. And now doesn't want to switch on again. Hmm. Power it off. Power it back on. Yeah, it's switching on and switching off again now. Ah, this thing has proven to be quite troublesome. I'll try the RAM in the different slots. In fact, I'll just check in the user manual that the RAM is in the correct slots. Yeah, the RAM is in the correct slots. Let's just try this again. So we power it on. Power's on, power's off. And it's behaving differently after I reset the BIOS or the CMOS rather. Let's just check that I've actually soldered this chip correctly. I'm pretty sure I have, to be quite honest. And then we can just use a thermal camera, just see if anything's getting hot, but I don't think that'll be the problem. I've got an idea what's wrong with this. So let's just check these things, and then let's talk about that. Well, guys, we definitely have a problem here. I don't know how I've managed to do this, and this is how real this channel is, because what I've managed to do somehow if we can just focus on it, maybe zoom in a bit. As I've got a, what looks like a resistor, SMD, 
stuck between two pins of the EEPROM. See it there? <laughs> there. But I can't see where that comes from. So let's zoom out a little bit. So this is the chip. I'll have to just refer back to the video before I remove this to see whether I can clearly see on the overhead camera if there was a component there. I don't think there was one here nor there and I remember noting that these two were very close. Yeah, but that shouldn't be there. I don't know what it's doing on there. So guys, let's get that off the board and then let's just try it anyway. And if it still doesn't work, let's figure out if we can find a way to work out where that comes from. What I will note is that I do have the chip the right way round, okay? And when I lifted this chip, I lifted it cleanly upwards. I didn't slide anyway. You can see this is pin one and there's a little notch here for pin one. So whether that was on my soldering iron and somehow got stuck on there, I don't know. Let's see if we can get rid of it or at least take it off and keep hold of it. I have it. So it's there stuck on the end of my tweezers, okay? That's the component. It doesn't look like it's come from here at all. Interesting. Okay. Let's see if that makes any difference. Now I have a solder bridge. That's what happens when you start to mess with things. Gone. Okay. Okay, so we're ready to try again, guys. Let's give it a go. So power on. Start. And we're back to the LED light on. Will it go out? No. Just wait a little moment or five. I'll go back to doing the clear CMOS again, so power it off. Stick that on there for 10 seconds, so it said 5 or 10. Okay. I think that's probably 5 or 10, what do you reckon? Okay, turn that back off. Power again, start. No. I'll check again that the voltages are there. I did check before I reprogrammed the BIOS that I had voltages uh, on the CPU and RAM. In fact, we can try that now actually, just to make sure we still have voltages on it that we should have. Okay, so RAM, let me see, it's 5 volts there, just trying to find the RAM supply, 1.2, so we have RAM supply and we're looking for the V core, I can just find it. That's the 12 volts. Oh. Looks like we have no V core now. No, we don't have any V core. We had it before. Hmm, that's interesting. Well, I could reprogram this BIOS chip again. I mean, in case it's somehow screwed up. I'm not sure. 
what pins they are. We, five and six were shorted. Oh, it's had a resistor in there. Could be that resistor came from somewhere. If it did, it's going to be a bit hard to tell. I'll just refer back to the earlier video and have a look. But for whatever reason, now we don't have any vehicle, which is why it's not running. Okay, I just referred back to the previous recording actually, and none of the small components around here have actually dislodged. It's as it was before. So I'm going to take this BIOS back off. And let's try and program it again. I have the chip in the programmer. This is the MSI website. This is where I downloaded the BIOS from before, but we'll just do it again to make sure everything is correct. Although I'm sure it is correct. So that is the one I downloaded, 7A71V16. In fact, I'll probably say a one at the end of it now. Yeah, one dot zip because I've done it before. So that is in actual fact the one I did download, but we can unzip it. And there is the file for the EEPROM, the BIOS file. So let's program it. This is still set up for the correct chip type, 25L12873F is exactly the one we had before, small outline 8 pin, that's fine. So we can read the chip. It's recognized it, it's reading it. I actually saved the existing file before, so I probably won't actually bother to save this. I'm just checking it can read it okay, and then let's program in the one we've just downloaded. Okay, so it has read it. Let's program it. Program, and then we'll find the one we just downloaded. Okay, so this is the one I previously downloaded. Let's go to the new one, but it is actually the same. So back into downloads, and the file with the one after it. That one, okay. Open that one. And let's program the chip. P. Right, let's see what happens. Okay, so it has programmed correctly and now it is verifying. And that was successful, so let's replace the chip and see if this makes any difference. We can try this again now. Personally, I don't think this will make any difference because I do have a good idea what's wrong with this motherboard. But let's see. Yeah, same thing. LED on all the time. Okay. I'm just holding the power button and see if this will actually shut down. It will shut down. Will it start again? Yes. Okay, so it's not like there's a short or something tripping out the power supply if you were thinking that was a possibility. But we don't have any vehicle, or we didn't have any, I'll check again. We have 12 volts coming in, okay, and then this should be vehicle. And there's nothing there, okay, nothing. We'll do the same as we did previously, so we will reset the CMOS settings, power's off now, we'll give it some seconds. Then we'll do, as I said, we'll try the thermal camera, but I don't think we're going to see anything. And then let's talk about what I think the problem is with it and how we may be able to fix it, okay? So that should be long enough, I would think, yeah. Power on. made no difference LED is on okay let's get the thermal camera okay we'll power it on so power 
Ja. I don't see anything overly hot or anything on here. Nothing that stands out. The VRMs are cold because they're not running, we know that. For the V-Core. Okay, nothing there standing out. Something a little bit warm down here, but it's not overly warm. How warm is it? 36 degrees. 37 degrees, that's nothing hot. Yeah, 31 degrees max, so there's nothing here that's actually showing up that you would think is a problem. That's the hottest thing there, that's 35 degrees. Okay. That's actually the uh, something just above the SIO chip. SIO is glowing, it has power on it. PCH is glowing, it has power on it. Okay. I saw something shiny, it'll look hot anyway. Okay. The fact is, I don't think this motherboard is actually faulty in as much as there is a faulty component on here. I think what's happening, and there's a few reasons for this, but I think what's happening is that this has what is called on some motherboards, ASRock, a, a TPU ROM. So this is like another memory chip that reads certain parameters out of the BIOS and stores them there. And the TPU ROM executes code before the CPU ever gets to read the BIOS. So prior to reading the BIOS, it's executing code from the TPU. And I think that's corrupted on this board. Now I had a look around, I can't see any obvious chip which would be the one. It may well be a function of the SIO chip. So it could be in there, but I think that may be the problem with this. And the reason is particularly because of the way this is behaving. So when I first reprogrammed the BIOS with the later version, in fact, the latest version, it changed the behavior of the board, okay? When I then reset the CMOS, I got it to change the behavior again. And then when I reprogrammed the BIOS, it changed the behavior back to the, how it was the second time. And I actually think the problem is this TPU ROM. Now, I'm not an expert particularly on this. This is kind of on the edge of my experience, really. But I do know who to ask about it, who probably could give some more information. So I think there may well be a part two of this one. I'm interested to know if any of you guys watching know more on that particular topic. Yeah. I have a number of programmers, which I think could probably sort this out, but I do need a bit of guidance on it. I admit, guys, I ain't the best tech out there. I'm okay, but you know, but there are some people who have expertise in certain niches and areas, more than I have, yeah? So we'll leave that one there. It ain't fixed. I'm quite convinced it ain't exactly faulty in as much as something is wrong, change the part, it will work. I think it's much more to do with this I'm talking about. This TPU thing sort of came out on the Z170 and upwards board, Z270, and as far as I know, the later ones, 370, 390, and so on, all had this. And I do believe it's something I need to learn a bit more about. Okay, hope you enjoyed that. Hope we talked about some things, maybe some things you didn't know about, sparked your interest. So guys, get into the comments below and I'll see you all soon on another Learning Electronics Repair video. Ciao for now.